In this video, I will cover how to use a custom data set to train the Yolo V8 model for object detection and use a train model to detect objects in unseen images, also known as inference. I'm going to go over how to create your virtual environment, install Yolo V8 via the Ultralytics package, go over the data set's folder structure, talk about the YAML file content, go through some image annotation tools, talk about the image annotation labels file structure, go over the Yolo V8 custom data set training process, go through the YOLO V8 training results, and finally use the YOLO V8 object detection with the trained model. So by the end of this video, we will see how we can detect this picture of a dog being carried by a drone with our own trained model. To create your virtual environment, go ahead and run this command here and activate it. Next, you want to install your Ultralytics package. So if you plan to use your GPU, make sure you install PyTorch using this command. And finally, you could use the pip install Ultralytics to install the YOLO. Now for your data sets, you want to put it inside your data sets folder inside your root directory. And inside of here, you're going to have your train and valid folders, which you can specify in your YAML file, which we'll discuss later. So here you can see inside train, you're going to have images and labels. Valid is also going to have images and labels. And for the labels, it's going to have a corresponding name to the name of your image. So for example, image one is going to be .jpg, and then the corresponding label is going to be image1.txt, and same for the valid folders. So now let's take a look at our YAML file. So you can see I have my YAML file inside my data sets folder, but you could have it anywhere you want. Um, as long as you tell the path where it is inside your code, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And the content contains the following. So you can see we have our train and valid. So these are the path relative to the data sets folder. So this is telling us where we store it. And then you're going to specify the number of classes as an integer. And then the names is going to be the names of your classes. So here I only have drones, which is going to be an int and then the name of your class as a string. But if you had more than one, you're going to fill out one and two. So if we take a look at the actual uh, data.yaml file that I have, it looks just like this. Okay. So these are some image annotation tools you can use if you want to annotate your data set. You have label image, RoboFlow, CVAT, uh, VOTT, and LabelBox. Um, but for my case, since I got the drones data set from somewhere, the data has been already labeled, so I don't actually need to label it. But you can also create your own annotator using the help of ChatGPT if you want a more customized approach. Now let's take a look at the image annotation labels file structure. So we can see that inside our txt file, we're going to have the class index, the x center, y center, the width object, and the height of the object. And for each object, you're going to have a new line. So all of these values for the actual object is going to be actually normalized based off of the width and height of the image. So it's going to be values that's going to be less than one since it's normalized. And you can see that all of these dimensions are defined in this picture down below. So as a concrete example, you can see that for pick 31, we're going to have our first class, which is zero, which is our drone. And then these are all the dimensions that's been normalized. Now we can take a look at our YOLO V8 custom data set training. So we have a train custom data set function, which we will pass in the name of our run. And inside of here, we're going to call our object detection class and then call the train function. So when we call the object detection class, what we do here is we set up our directory. And then inside our train function, we're going to train off of the YOLO V8N that we passed in right here. So inside of here, you can see that uh, when we pass it in, there's different task and verbose settings you can set, which we're not using. And inside the main function that does all the magic is a train. So these are some parameters that I'm using. You have an image size, the epoch, the batch, um, the project name that we have. So this is going to be the directory. We're going to put it inside our train. And then you can name whatever you want for the name of your run. So all of this will do the training. And certain things you could play around with the epoch and the batch. We're not going to go too much in detail with that, but just know that you could play around with that to see what's optimal for your results that you want to achieve. Okay. And then finally, it's going to have some results, which is um, 
something that will give us our information, but we're not going to use it directly since it's going to go ahead and save everything into our folders. So after you're done training, you're going to see the different results inside your run folder. So inside of here, you're going to have the general structure is going to show you your weights. It's going to have your best and last uh, weights available. You're going to have a confusion matrix normalize your P curve, R curve, and your results. So you can see inside my weights, there's the weights that are available. And you can see we have some confusion matrix that's normalized and not normalized. And you can see the different labels, the P curve, the PR curve, R curve. And you can see these are the different training batches that we're using. And you have the validation uh, labels as well. So inside of here is the results. Um, you can see that these curves here show you your MAP, which is increasing, which is good. Um, for my example here, I'm just using a very small subset of the data set and just not using too many epochs and batches just to demonstrate how to train. So just getting something quick out. But you can see here that the MAP is increasing. So for MAP, you have at the 0.5, you typically, what that tells you is a 50% overlap. And the closer it gets to one, the better, but you know you might need more training to get there. And then the 50 to 95 is going to have a more stringent requirement, which talks about 50 to 95% overlap. So you go ahead and take a look at that and see what results suits your application. But the best way is to just see how it performs with, that, with your actual data and then make a decision from there if your training was good enough. Now, finally, we could go ahead and run our detect object using custom trained model. So here we're passing in the results, which is the name of our run. And then we have our image that we're going to test. So inside of here, again, we create our object detect object, and then we call the predict function. So we're going to pass in our run instance and our image name. So if we jump into our predict. You see here we have our weights path, which we specified. We're using the best. And then here we have the image path, which we specify the example that we want to test. And then we initialize our YOLO function with our weights path. And then from our model object, this predict, what this predict is actually going to return is results, which is a list. So we have to loop it through the results. And then the result that show is going to show the results. So the source, there's different options. You could use images, videos, and different types. There's a full documentation on that. But um, you could just specify the type of data you want to input in the source. and uh, typically, it's going to be a string that you're that you're going to input, or it could be like an array if it's an image of a matrix. So, after I run this, you're going to see that here we have an image of what we just detected, and you can see it did a pretty good job in figuring out that there's a drone in this image. If you want to see Yolo V8 running in real time, check out the video that I have up here.